Yeah, deadlines are ridiculous in themselves because I could just be like, no, I quit. I stop. Solo show, you need 50 paintings? Here's two. I don't go to conventions like this all the time, so like, whenever I see people, it's like, yeah, you know, fuck yeah, what up? <laughs> but if that was every day of my life, I'd be like exhausted. I'd be like, get away from me. <laughs> I could, I could do that, and you know, but then that would be a different choice. Then I'd have to make all this incredible pressure upon just those two paintings, and maybe I don't, I, well, I don't do that. Like, every painting I make, the next one is, my favorite, usually, and then the one before that, I'm like, ah, it's garbage, and there are a few that I really like, and I look back at them, and when I look back, I don't think, oh, so much time has gone by. I just look at that like that, I did that. It's sort of like, to me, it's all very linear, compressed into a dot. It's, it's not cyclical, it's not, here's the way it's going, you can't get back to here, it's just, forget about it, you can't. I used to make 8mm camera uh, films when I was a kid, and then I made 16mm when I was uh, a teenager. And um, then when my son was born, he's 20 now, and he was born, and he was interested in systems, and he like trained systems like many boys and stuff. But I thought that um, the idea of writing your own films, shooting them, editing, and then showing them to people seemed the most fantastic system for him, for his sort of six-year-old brain. So we made Super 8 films. And he did his, and in some ways, actually, I mean, I'm making my own films now, but the, the system that I use now is the system I developed with him when he was, you know, barely a child. So in a way, he's been making these films, and I've sort of been carried along with it as well as a producer and uh, facilitator. But on the other hand, okay, I mean, that's a limitation, and it, that, that really tre tremendously focused my attention in some ways, not just obviously having children, but just going in nine to five. I was... Uh employed with a big company and was a part of a wonderful art department previously. Um, but when the work was so creatively involved that you don't have any energy left for your personal work, and then I was like, okay, what if I eliminate the commute to work that gives me a few hours, extra hours, and then I would maybe do 50% freelance work and 50% fine art. But again, it's because with... with um, commercial work, you come to the office and you have a task, concrete task, by a certain amount of time, you're done for a day. With personal work, it's so much more different. It's, um, you almost have to stay away from everyone. I'm speaking from my personal experience, to stay away from everyone and everything as the morning starts to eliminate the influence, just to be in your own head and with your own ideas. And I find it's beautiful, I love this. The purity of the process and the struggles and the happy moments of it, so. One thing, if I'd had to work and do commercial work uh, and meet those standards and needs, and that had become habitualized in me, um, I, I, I avoided a certain kind of success that might have happened, you know, in the illustration world. And so it would have been very hard to, um, yeah, it cut me loose from that. Am I being clear? I was lucky that, you know, because of that, because of that sort of chain of events, I never really broke through to a kind of mainstream success, and so I was never tempted by those things. And in that kind of vacuum, I developed other systems to amuse myself or to find what I might be interested in, and then those became the, do the dominant parts of how I thought about even how I would progress to the next step, you know, next year or whatever. Recently, I was working on my gallery show. I did a solo show in San Francisco. And I was like working nonstop on the hour. All just, it was just intense, intense. And there was one day where I woke up and I could barely move. I was so exhausted and so tired. And I was just like, you know what? It's today I'm going to take it off. Like, I do myself harm by pushing myself to work, even though I'm that exhausted, you know? And, and I'm not saying every time I feel like taking a nap, I stop working, because no, you know? 
but where the point where all my muscles hurt, my hands were hurting, I was exhausted. And I took that day off and it was beautiful. The next day I came with new energy and finished a painting and it worked out really well. And so I listened to myself and sometimes I feel like I don't want to be around people at all. Sometimes I feel like I need that solitude and I listen to myself too. And I go into my room, and read news or like start, you know, painting or, or something like that. It's a balance, but it's also about kind of figuring out what it is that you need. You can't stop thinking about, you can't stop even thinking. It's like you can't stop believing it. It's like I can't stop thinking, even if you are at someone's birthday party or just going for a walk, I still keep thinking, oh, the tree branch shape is awesome. Or, oh, look at the dappled light on the, on the grass. Not even for collecting it as a reference, but just making those observations. And then you see other people enjoying the sunny day. And I bet no one, none of them, unless they're artists or connected to art in some way, thinking about dappled light on the grass. They think about, oh, let's go for beer, let's have a burger, or other, other, th other things. You know, it's a little bit different way of thinking and seeing things. I can make my life unsocial, do you know what I mean? And that's kind of okay. So in a weird way, I, if I'm careful about it, I can pretty much make sure that I'm not interrupted by things. Sometimes you don't have to pack a painting or, or something, or try and do two things at once, and whatever it is. But essentially, I'm lucky in that I can, I can preserve that time if I, and that is the, the discipline, is making sure that I don't arrange to meet people for lunch or you know, any of that. To shut yourself in a room and just draw for drawing's sake without considering what you're drawing or why, that does nothing, you know? And to do it all day, every day, without any rest, uh, that's just a recipe for insanity. Because you're not really, you're not really improving, you're just, you know, a crazy dude in a, or a crazy lady in, in a room just drawing all the time. You know, think about what you're drawing. Think about why you're drawing. In fact, so much of art is just thought. It's less about the, the painting. It's more about, yeah, it's more about the things you think about. It's about you're trying to recreate reality. What are the, what are the things that makes reality reality? What is the, how does the light work in, you know, a low dim scenario? How do the eyes, you know, relate to the proportion of the nose? And then how do you feel? How do you want to make a better story? How can you tell a better story? These are things that should come into play when you're drawing, when you're painting. Everything changed in some ways, and, and part of it changed, though, is a feeling of, um, I mean, I don't know, even, I mean, part of it is an instant feeling of mortality, you know? I mean, which is strange because the, your children are these little useless things. Um, so there's a feeling of, of the urgency of time, not the time to accomplish something wondrous, but just that um, you should do it now in some way, or you should, you should start to, you know, I did, I've done a lot of commercial work, a lot of, um, and commercial photography as well, and, you know, the world is full of this stuff too, and, um, you know, if you think there's a chance to do something for different reasons than that, and you're going to allow yourself to do it, uh, you sort of want to get to work with it and find out even what that might be. Um, so there was some urgency, urgency, and at the same time, you know, your daily life, I mean, it's all, that's all to do with having children. Your daily life is totally determined by your family, and that's what you want, and that is the core of your life. So even though you have this urgency, I mean, maybe it's good, it actually is simultaneously less important um, you know, like when you're 20, art is the most important thing. I mean, it just seems... I kind of felt when I said that about having children yesterday at the, you know, was it the confession thing. Um, you know, maybe people are 25. If you say art was not the most important thing anymore, I mean, that, that doesn't feel good or right. You know, it feels unheroic in some way or, or conventional. But, you know, on the other hand, it also kind of releases you from... Um, taking it 
too seriously in some ways. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it seriously and do it to the, your full abilities and, and think about it, but you know, it's kind of strangely peripheral in other ways. For a company, it was exhausting, physically and mentally. In a good way, you, you have this sense of accomplishment and you, you do, um, and you achieve uh, things and you feel gratified. Uh, but you get so much more tired when you work on a personal work. Just because you, you let your brain... So basically your brain doesn't stop thinking. If you, if you work, let's say, 9 to 5, usually it's not the case. Usually, sometimes it's that your day is longer in the office, right? But at least after that, you go home, you relax, you do whatever you need to do. When you are focusing on personal work, at least for me, I think about it as soon as I wake up and yeah. when I go back to bed. And actually, sometimes you have dream about it because you think about it so much, so it's so ingrained. And I feel like it's much more important to really be present when you are working. Like, for example, in my personal work, in my everyday work, I work anywhere from six to eight hours a day. You know, I take my weekends off because I need that time to refresh. As soon as like, you know, 7 p.m. hits, I go and have dinner with my loved ones. I have a glass of wine, I relax, I play video games. You know, and it's one of those things where it's like, but in the time that I'm working, I'm focused on the work. In the time that I'm studying, I'm focused on the study. I mean, everyone has routines and habits. A friend gave me for Christmas once the, the uh, daily habits of a hundred, you know, well-known people, Sigmund Freud, whatever. I mean, many people, Beethoven had a fantastic daily routine he went through. And um, I do think it, like for me, it's a mind-preparing routine. It's kind of disengaging from one environment. For me, it was my domestic environment, which is obviously very common for people, and aligning your brain with whatever, you know, totally different demand is going to be made of it. And, you know, the, the main thing I was saying for my routine, really, is this idea of listening to this music over and over again. So when you come in and you know what's going to happen, and you're anticipating, looking forward to it, and you, you know, you hit play on the CD player, you drop back down into that sort of, uh, mental state where you left yesterday, uh, which really is, you know, if, if everything is flowing well, it's just totally delicious, you really, you reconnect very easily. Um, and it's much easier to ignore all the things that you're uh, trying not to deal with. project I really like to dive into it with my whole head to completely devote myself and not give myself time, time limitations so I like to spend a good amount of time on research and setting up for example I uh, I work with models I set up photo shoots and the stories that I like to portray in my personal artwork they're very personal at least they're starting to be more and more personal because I just now I just have a chance to explore that side of things. And because the ideas that I'm working on, they have been in my head for a long time, so I want to give them a proper amount of time and proper research. I just want to celebrate those ideas in a way. Uh, there, is, there is no reason why I should half-ass it now that I have all the time. You know, the other thing is I have plenty of bad habits as well, you know, where I do the same way that I would go nine to five, I also do something else that is totally self-defeating in some way, so. Um, and I'm not, you know, I go nine to five, I don't always do it either, do I? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I go down there and after half an hour you leave or go get coffee or you cheat every way you possibly can. But um, routine is pretty spectacular, I would say. It's a very, the routine is practice. It's you know, when you talk about your practice down at the studio, the brushes you use and the, the colors and <clears throat> how you set up your light, just arriving at the studio and starting is part of the practice too. And uh, I don't know, I think, you know, sometimes the distractions are genuinely interesting things and sometimes, you know, you want to be distracted. And, then, and also, you know, if for sure, there are plenty of times where, you know, I force myself to bear down 
uh, I mean, it's kind of agonizing because, you know, you feel, again, it's kind of ethical obligation or, or what else can you do? I mean, you, I'm in the studio. I'm, i got to get on with it. And, um, you know, you produce lame, labored work. I mean, you have to be willing to accept that somehow. Um, and sometimes, you know, like, okay, I do my painting. I did all these photographs. I do the collage as well. I'm not saying that's like a wonderful spread of stuff, but rather that, you know, sometimes the collages, which are almost completely pleasure to do. I mean, there's no pain at all. I mean, painting is constantly, um, you know, a torment in some ways. The collages are pure pleasure. And, but in a strange way, they actually turned to be incredibly important to me in how I thought about art and painting and everything. So even though they seem like a crazy, uh, again, self-defeating thing to do in terms of my timing and what anyone wanted to buy from me and whatever, they were sort of a strange long-term influence and, and uh, benefit on a scale I never could have guessed at. So it was, I'm saying they were, dis they were a distraction. They stopped me from doing you know, what would have been money jobs or refining certain skills or even researching painters that might have affected me in powerful way, whatever, you know. Um, but that distraction was just great. And I, and I, and I guess that's been my, the way I've tried to live my life too. You know, I, I, I will have my glass of wine, maybe two or three, but not every day, you know, or not all the time. I will eat a little bit of cake every once in a while, but not every day, you know. I will paint uh, the things that I really love to paint, but I'll also to make time to paint things that I don't know how to paint, because that makes me a better artist. And, or, you know, you know and, and and it can be said about anything. I feel like balance is so needed, and importantly, too, to be able to listen to yourself, too. Like, like listen to what you need. I don't smoke, but if I was going to quit smoking and I constantly had cigarettes on me and I was constantly, ah, oh, this minute I'm not going to smoke, and, you know, in half an hour I think, ah, oh, I'm not going to smoke, and, you know, in two hours I think, oh, I'm not going to smoke. Um, I mean, that's not a practical way to go around it. So for me to think, I go to my studio, I'm a painter, I go to my studio, not only do I listen to this music, but I push this button and it comes out of those speakers. I mean, it's a really um, time-saving device <laughs> for me. I'm very specific about which thoughts I allow in my mind and which ones I push out. Like, I do, I do hold myself accountable when it's like, oh man, I slacked off so hard. I shouldn't have. But I also don't dwell on that. I'm like, I'm just gonna move on and I'm gonna focus now. And then sometimes it's like, oh my God, I didn't call the people that I needed to call because I was working so hard. But I'm not gonna be like, I'll never call them because they don't want to talk to me anymore. I'm a ghost to them now. No, I just call them. I move on. <laughs>